Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today Apple officially released the all new iPad Air. And in this video, it's going to be somewhat of a comparison between its predecessor, the fourth generation iPad, and I'm also going to give you guys kind of my initial thoughts and do somewhat of a quick review on the all new iPad Air. So to start off, I wanted to run some benchmark tests. Let's open up Geekbench on both of these devices. Again, iPad Air on the right, and we have the fourth generation iPad on the left. So at this point, as I'm sure most of you know, the iPad Air features Apple's all new 64-bit A7 chip, which was first introduced in the iPhone 5S last month. So this was the first smartphone of any kind to feature a 64-bit process processor, and like the 5S, the all-new iPad Air is the first of Apple's iPad tablets to feature a 64-bit processor. So really quick, I wanted to preface by saying that this may appear deceptive at first, because over here on the left, the fourth generation iPad features an A6X processor that's clocked at 1.4 gigahertz, whereas over on the right, it's reported by Geekbench 3 that the Air features a A7 chip that's clocked at 1.39 gigahertz. They both have one gigabyte of RAM. It's reporting as 988 megabytes over here on the 4 and 976 megabytes over here on the Air. So I'm just going to run the benchmark tests on both of these really quick and the results may surprise you but if you've seen any of the benchmarks on the iPhone 5s you'll know the 64-bit processor will take the win. So the iPad Air just finished we're still waiting on the fourth generation iPad we have some really great results on the Air I'm just going to swipe up into the multitasking interface to show you guys that Geekbench was the only thing running in the background at the time of this test and I'm also going to swipe up over here on the fourth generation iPad, as you can see, just Geekbench. So we have a really awesome single core score over on the Air of 1480 and a multi-core score of 2691, whereas the fourth generation iPad has a single core score of 781 and a multi-core score of 1429. So these are both dual core processors. The big difference here is the 64-bit architecture of the A7 chip itself. Also, it may be worth mentioning that the iPad Air features a Co-M7 processor that offloads motion data from the A7 chip, so in certain situations, like when using the camera, it will perform even better than a device that doesn't have the Co-M7 processor. Now I wanted to point out something that's pretty interesting. So I have the iPhone 5S here, I have Geekbench 3 open on the device, and as you can see, it registers that the A7 chip is running at 1.28 gigahertz, whereas over here on the Air, remember, it registers at 1.39 gigahertz. It also has one gigabyte of RAM, and I'm going to show you guys my previous score. So here we have a single core score of 1411 and a multi-core score of 2550. So there isn't much of a difference as far as performance is concerned between the iPad Air and the iPhone 5S. However, there is a slight variance, and that's mostly because the A7 chip in the iPad Air has a better clock speed than on the iPhone 5S. So just wanted to give you guys some really quick Geekbench comparisons between the iPad Air, the fourth generation iPad, and kind of the iPhone 5S, just to show you guys where things sit. Also, as I'm sure you can tell, the iPad Air looks significantly smaller than the fourth generation iPad on camera here. It's not even down all the way, so the bottoms aren't even lined up. I'm going to try to do that on camera right now. It's kind of hard with the smart cover. It keeps wanting to grab it back. But as you can see, there's a huge difference between the two as far as the bezel is concerned. So we have a much narrower side bezel on both the top and the bottom of the iPad when it's in landscape orientation, that is, which attributes to its smaller design. And it's also significantly lighter than the fourth generation iPad. Again, I was very surprised when I first picked it up. I detailed that in my unboxing video. It's a world of difference between these two devices. I mean, it feels more like you're holding an iPad mini than really a full-sized iPad. However, it does have that bigger screen. So there's a real advantage with the Air, in my opinion. I'm just going to take off the smart cover on the fourth generation iPad here so they can be on even ground and there we go again like I've been saying there's a huge difference between the two also the design of the air is much more streamlined than that of the fourth generation iPad again it looks very similar to the iPad mini it's smooth it's flat it's thinner and it's also more compact Another thing to note is that on the bottom we have a stereo speaker design on the iPad Air, whereas on the fourth generation iPad and really all previous iPad generations, we just have a single speaker setup. So that's something 
that's really great about the Air. Again, it's just overall a really awesome device. The main benefits of the iPad Air, again, are the A7 chip and the complete redesign. If you want more details on the iPad Air, such as all of its features, including all of the new Retina Display iPad Mini 2's features, just be sure to check out my new iPad Air and iPad Mini 2 in under a minute video. I'll have a link to that on the screen now if you're on the desktop version of YouTube. Also, if you want a chance to win a brand new iPad Air, just be sure to check out my unboxing video and follow the guidelines there. Again, I will have another annotation on the screen for that if you're on the desktop version of YouTube. Of course, if you want a chance to enter to win a $100 Amazon gift card in this video, just be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comment's been posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. Of course, I really hope you guys like this video and I'd love to hear some feedback. So just be sure to let me know. And of course, if you want to be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.